just to kind of put in perspective, Influx is here, they're more on the server side of things. They're going to help you get massive distribution. You know, you're going to be able to take that video feed and get it out to thousands or millions of people. And TalkBox here is going to be able to help you really quickly get that up and running in the browser, in iOS, maybe in some native app. Uh, I'll tell you guys a little bit about any meeting and my entrepreneurial story just to hopefully kind of get people uh, excited about building something and uh, give you guys kind of why we wanted to do this. So my background, uh, I started any meeting a long time ago. Uh, Romanian, if anybody, there's any? No, no. I would have seen you like right at the door. We have a couple of Romanians on our faculty. So. And, and, and they're doing okay, yeah? <laughs> I uh, went to a math and science high school, always kind of a big geek, but uh, balanced that out with guitar playing. So that way I kind of, you know, now I'm doing business, which is weird. So I uh, went to UCI-ICS, uh, finished school in 1999, and, and the first job I got was a company called Digivent. I was their first engineer. There was like a VP of engineering, and then there was me. And they had no product, uh, and they hired a consulting agency to build their product and I was in all the spec meetings and then a couple of couple of months after that agency tried to build something they demoed it and the CEO hated it and so nights and weekends I I started kind of thinking about what I had heard in all those spec meetings and I ended up building what they wanted and then I just showed it to them and they're like this is perfect so they ran that company off of my code for a couple of years but Ran out of funding. The whole sales and marketing part's important too, apparently. Um, <laughs> um, second job, went into another company. I was doing traditional events for healthcare. They wanted to do online events. I spent six months building the next gen product of this webcasting platform. Their partners had a falling out. The company broke up right as it was about to get launched. I negotiated uh, to keep the source code I built for them. And so then I started my company. And this was like in 2004, um, built, you know, doing consulting on the side. It was just me. Uh, my father, being a, an immigrant as well, had the big American uh, dream, wanted to start something. Son, you got to start something. I'll help you. And um, initially started off with um, a traditional web conferencing company back when the only player in the space was WebEx. I don't know if you guys know about WebEx, but they were charging like $500 a month. We were charging $200 a month. That was a huge win. Eventually, uh, pricing went from $500 a month down to $49 a month. So we had to figure something out. So we went from $200 to free. And that's when we created any meeting. Actually, it was first called Freebinar. You know, got to put the word free. Free is very powerful. Freebinar wasn't my idea. But uh, free got us going, but then we took free out of the word because then it kind of boxes you into something. And we went from zero users on Freebinar to 10,000 users uh, in one year. Uh, got the involvement of some great local angel groups, Tech Coast Angels, Pasadena Angels. Chris here, uh, you guys should meet Christopher Buxtein. He's in Tech Coast Angels. Talk to him about that. Uh, got them when we were at 10,000 users, and since then, uh, scale to, uh, we're close to 300,000 users signed up for the service at this point, uh, doing thousands of meetings a month, all that. So it's been an amazing journey as a first time entrepreneur. My background is coding, so any of those coders that want to figure out how to get a business off the ground, talk to me. I'd, I'd, love, I'd love to help. Um, what our product is, um, it's full featured everything you need to host a meeting online. It's video conferencing, audio conferencing, screen sharing, documents, chat, polling, recording, everything you need. And we're flash-based. And being flash-based, we have some of the pains that, that John mentioned. But um, flash has been really great to build on because you, know, you don't need an engineering team of 20 people. You can get up and running fairly quickly. Um, and now we're really excited about WebRTC, obviously. I'll show you guys what our product looks like. Uh, Six-way video chat. <clears throat> uh, this is a more zoomed-in version of video chat. Video chat with screen sharing. Uh, you can see who's in the meeting. You can chat with each other. Um, and then we have an iPad app that's coming out shortly here. We're just waiting to go through the uh, iTunes process. So 
Um, let's actually get to why we're really here, though, and talk about WebRTC and why we think WebRTC is really exciting. So <clears throat> for those that are like totally new to WebRTC, what Google's trying to do, and they've paired up uh, with Firefox. So right now, WebRTC only really works on Google Chrome and Firefox. And they also have some native APIs. So if any of you guys are like C++ coders, you can just take the C++ code and bake it into a desktop app, OK? Or maybe iOS and get some uh, desktop and browser stuff. But what it gives you is real easy to do video streaming, audio streaming, and soon, real soon, data streaming right out of the browser. Um, they've solved a lot of the problems that probably took Skype maybe a couple of years to solve. Uh, Google actually acquired two companies. One was called uh, On2. I think that was like a $100 million acquisition. Eighty or somewhere between eighty to one twenty. They didn't divulge. And then there was a company called uh, Global IP Solutions. That was for the audio stack, and that was another couple of hundred million. And they took two hundred, three hundred million dollars worth of acquisition, and they just said it's free now to everybody. And that's why this is so powerful. And that's why uh, the industry believes that WebRTC will just completely disrupt the way communication happens. You won't need a handset. You won't need a mobile phone. You can basically build uh, communication into your, tr into your whiteboard. You, know, you can put everything you need to stream video and audio into a whiteboard. Okay? So it's very powerful. But right now, th this is what it does uh, out of the box on Chrome 24 and Firefox 18. And it really lets you do easy stuff peer-to-peer. -peer. You can talk to one another. Uh, click to call, like you'll see these buttons pop up everywhere. You're on a website, you want to talk to their customer support, you click the button and you have a one-on-one -on -one call. Um, and, the, and the basic Skype video calling, like we just saw how easy it is to do that. And the reason, the reason that it is so easy is because it doesn't involve any server, server side. Uh, now the browsers can talk to each other and all the servers need to do is say, well, Here's some information about the guy on the other side. Here's some information about the guy on the other side. Now you guys connect, and I'm out of the picture. Okay. Um, but there's still some, I, what I think, decent problems to solve. Uh, you know, you don't want the easy stuff like this has now been solved. Like Skype, wh what are they doing? Uh, they they got to solve the hard problems. And here's my the way I see the hard problems is there's still not an out of the box solution for one to many. If you wanted to do uh, streaming to thousands of people, you certainly need a vendor like Influxus because they have the server infrastructure, they've got server farms to distribute that. Um, so if you were to solve that yourself, that would be a challenge. Interoperability. This means um, what if you want your video to talk to one of those $250,000 Cisco telepresence systems? These are the ones where like, you're sitting at a desk and there's like a whole room that's video conferencing, right? Uh, you still need to be able to figure out how to get WebRTC to talk to other systems. And there's a lot of video conferencing out there, anywhere from $250,000 to little video phones. Okay? They don't talk to each other. So if somebody figures out how to transcode the codex and all that, uh, there's an opportunity there. If you want to do this in IE or in Safari, that doesn't work yet. So you may need to figure out how to make Flash talk to WebRTC. Okay? Um, the signaling, this is, again, party A wants to talk to party B. Right now, there's, you, you enter a phone number and you can talk to that person. That doesn't exist for WebRTC. How do you notify some other person that you've got somebody that wants to talk to them? So the signaling, the starting the call, hanging up the call. One challenge I see is how do you really test? Uh, you know, from, from an engineering point of view, once you really start building your solutions and you guys have a video chat here and a video chat there, it's kind of hard to test this without two people or without, oh, I'm over here. Is it working? How, how do you test that? I, I have no clue. Um, and then recording. Peer-to-peer uh, -peer means literally this guy's talking to this guy. So if, if you're a business, if you're a law firm and you want to record every call that every lawyer does, or if you're an enterprise and want, wants to record every, you obviously need something in the middle to record that call. How does that work? Okay. So just wanted to put this out there for things for you guys to think about if you don't already have projects. Here's some problems in WebRTC, okay? 
So here's what we're going to do today. Um, looks like some of you guys already have teams. If you don't have teams, feel free to mingle for the next 10, 15 minutes. The badges are color coded. Uh, green are sort of the sponsors and the people who've helped put this together. So if you need any help, talk to us. Uh, I believe red are engineers, uh, yellow are designers, and uh, red are business guys, product guy. no, red's engineers, blue are the product marketing business guys. So find yourselves. Um, we're going to have a day of coding, looking to stop here at around 7.30. Uh, it looks like, you know, we have a, a cozy group, so I, I imagine the presentations won't take any longer than about 30 minutes. So we'll do five minute uh, presentations where people can demo their product, what they've built. And then we've got uh, the judges. There's about five of us. Uh, we're going to judge it based on most viable product. So can this thing actually go out there and be a product that somebody's going to want to use or buy? Uh, is it technically challenging? Did you actually do anything harder than just take an existing demo that's out there and put it together? Okay. Uh, is it complete? Uh, is it original? And we may or may not do the SMS texting. Uh, I was just thinking about it this morning, like the audience vote, everybody's coding, so everyone's going to vote for themselves. <laughs> so, you know, there's no friends and family and, and all that. So we'll figure that piece out later. Uh, we're going to keep it loose. Uh, you guys feel free to ask any of us for help or, you know, uh, talk amongst yourselves, whatever. And then afterwards, we're going to have a mixer at the district lounge. We'll, we'll be hosting uh, open bar for whoever's over 21. If <laughs> Uh, if anyone's not, you can't. So, um, uh, any questions at this point? We'd love to answer any questions. Huh? All right, we're, we're, we're eager to get going. All right, guys, let's hack. <laughs>